The more I travel, the more it seems I simply want to get lost. As the world I know expands, I lean towards the corners of it that elude me. The irony of trekking deeper forward in search of a place where I can retreat in near complete solitude. It's what brought me here, navigating through a murky river amidst the jungle, somewhere deep in the heart of Borneo. In the presumptions of my imagination, few places seem more distant than Borneo. Perhaps partly due to the fact that I live 10,000 miles away, but more so in the romantic way. In the ways that yearn for the adventures read in the novels of David Livingston, and the tales of Gulliver's travels that I dreamt over as a child. That was what I envisioned. Wild jungle rivers, the deserted, remote beaches that once served as the backdrop for the first season of Survivor. This land I had predetermined in the most idyllic of ways was ultimately my undoing. Out of touch with reality and, as usual with any presumption, misguided at best. The island of Borneo is the third largest island in the world, shared by Indonesia, who call it Kalimantan, the tiny nation of Brunei, to which the island is named after, and lastly, Malaysia. Within Malaysian Borneo, there are two states, Sarawak to the south and Sabah to the north. Kota Kinabalu is Sabah's bustling capital city and main jump-off point to the rest of the state. A walk through its commercially packed streets and you'll immediately see that there is nothing wild or remote about it. On the bright side, all the development brings about a proper food scene, as evidenced by this place, the Api Api Night Food Market. A collection of independent food and beverage vendors showcasing the wide depth of flavors found in both traditional Bornean and Malaysian street cuisines. Lined up throughout Gaia Street, in the heart of Kota Kinabalu's historic district, the night market is a welcoming block party for those with little cash and a big appetite. Alrighty, so it's late, I'm hungry. One of the good things about Kota Kinabalu being so busy and developed, you got this. Lots of really nice stands, you get some fried squid, some odds and sods. I'm a fan. Oh, and what's this? Some type of Japanese-inspired squid caricature? That must be a great place to grab some tasty sea creatures grilled over some charcoals and drowned in mysterious brown sauces. Okay, okay. Uh, you want spicy? Spicy, please. Okay. Thank you. By the way, when they ask for spicy, usually most Westerners can't handle it. I have a crazy tolerance for spice, of which I'm very proud of. Thank you. Thank you. Just have a seat? Great. Thank you. Alrighty, let's see what we got here. Wow, it's good. It's like a, like a barbecued squid. We add some mushrooms. A lot of curry, a lot of spice. Lesson for you kids out there, if it looks strange, eat it. I mean, how bad could it be unless it's some kind of bug? Do you know they're bringing out their best product? because they live and die by their customers out in the streets. So if they ever poison someone, which is the common misconception with street food, they wouldn't be able to get those return clients, right? You can't poison for a small business, right? Fun fact, only time I've ever had some kind of serious stomach illness, Jamba Juice. Not even lying. I've eaten in rest stops in Cambodia, nothing. Jamba Juice, straight to the shitter for three days. This is an all-too-common daily occurrence in Borneo. 
howling winds, the indicator of a rapidly approaching downpour. Around the same time, every day, depending on the season. It's harmonious, albeit paralyzing. The rain trickles steadily, enticing reflection, almost as if to tell you, you're not going anywhere now, so just sit down and think. The jungle's therapeutic way of showing you the bigger picture. Now that the storms pass like clockwork, it's time to see some islands. Giselton Point, your starting point for any island tour in Kota Kinabalu. On today's menu, we have a choice of up to four islands for up to $12 a pop. Admittedly, I'm extremely skeptical, as the concept of island tours with large groups is usually a rushed and moderately amusing experience at best. From Vietnam to Thailand to the Philippines, there's a high chance that an island tour package is about as amusing as a commuter ferry within Boston Harbor. Nonetheless, I choose a two island package to Sapi and Manukan Islands. So here we go. Up first is Sapi. I guess I should just skip the lube, drop the sugar coating, and get to the point. There's no reason to come to this island. Sure, the water is beautiful. That is, on the parts of the island you're actually allowed to go to, which aren't many. That creates a clusterfuck of people sandwiched on a couple of beaches around what basically feels like a tropical campsite for Boy Scouts. There, I said it. Oh, and there's monkeys aplenty. And no, you should never feed them. So don't be like this guy. In case you're unfamiliar with them, they're actually more of a pest than anything. They're not cute, more like hopped up on meth and ready to steal anything you have laying around. It's a good thing my allotted 45 minutes here are up. Twenty minutes on the speedboat wondering why are these tours so lame later, I arrive at Manukan Island. Much larger than Sapi and infinitely more pleasant. I suppose that if you'd have to choose an island to visit here in KK, it would be this one. You really can't go wrong here. But on a broader note, I've yet again been scorned by an island tour, and the way they do it here is especially systematic. Due to the limited times you can spend on each stop, and the overdeveloped islands themselves, the illusion of a wild and quiet Bornean beach is sucked right out. The experience feels more like you're a cow and a herd of cattle being rounded up and transported from point A to B with just enough time to capture a quick Instagram pic so you can hashtag Lost Paradise on it, but knowing full well you edited out the group of 50 Chinese snorkelers behind you. Please put me on that boat and shoot me back to Giselton so I can be done with this. Luckily, I'm back to my resort in time for something worth viewing. A great sunset is always worth taking in, and in all the places I've been to, I've never seen one like this. Never seen such a spectrum of warm tones, rich orange and red hues transitioning to subtle indigo and deep purple. A Bornean sunset is a unique interplay of clouds and equatorial rays that creates an oil painting in the sky.
Today I leave the urbanization of Kota Kinabalu and venture deep into the Saba jungle where I'll be staying the night and heading up river early in the morning. I take a quick 40 minute flight across Borneo to Sandakan, a sleepy port town with a post-apocalyptic feel on the eastern coast of the island. From there, it's an excruciatingly bumpy and dragged out two and a half hour shuttle van further into the wilderness until you reach Sukau, a tiny outpost that hugs the Kota Kinabatangan River. This was the Borneo I had envisioned in my childish imagination. A desolate community relatively untouched by time, where life, though harsh, is simple. It is dictated by the ebb and flow of the jungle. I've booked a night at the Sukau Greenview and decided to purchase one of their tours separately. This is important to note because in Saba, lodges usually only sell packages as two or three day all-inclusive deals. Having been burned in the past by a dreadful all-inclusive cruise in Halong Bay, I wisely opt to book an excursion a la carte and the Sukau Greenview is one of the only lodges in the area that does this. It's also worth noting that booking these all-inclusive nature lodges is wildly expensive considering you're in Southeast Asia. Some will run you up to $400 a night per person, and mind you, most lodges handle no wildlife at all, nor do they help with aid for conservation efforts. Unfortunately, if you scratch the surface here in Sukau, you quickly realize that this whole experience is bordering on a scam. Even here at Greenview, everything is about shaking you down to the last penny. So with my $7 dinner of basic noodles begrudgingly in my stomach, I head to bed early to get some rest from my 6 a.m. river boat ride. in the morning somewhere in the heart of a dense Bornean jungle. Perhaps few times in my life have I felt so far from home as I do now. The early morning mist sets the stage for the leisurely voyage ahead, but first, a watered-down brown liquid that they tell me is coffee. I'd be lying to you if I said I was overly thrilled about this boat ride. Nothing has seemed to live up to the hype in my head, but alas, I was simply happy to be somewhere remote, experiencing something I'll probably never do again. So we're off. A two hour trek up and down a slice of the Kinabatangan River, where I'm told I can expect to see anything from crocs to pygmy elephants, though not a common sighting. What you will see, however, are monkeys. Lots and lots of monkeys. But the one worth mentioning is the proboscis type, known for its ball sack shaped nose and horny nature, which are pretty cool to see, just make sure you bring some binoculars. I'll go ahead and confess that I didn't do this riverboat trek because I'm an avid observer of animals in their natural habitat. However, I do find it to be a nice experience. I came out this way to this noisy boat with the clean river breeze howling around my body to fulfill a need. A need to know that I've been somewhere far removed from what I know as life as usual. To experience something wild and drop a pin on a part of the world that's name alone is synonymous with adventure and the obscure. Call me smug, but I did this for my own sense of self-satisfaction.
As I prepare to leave behind the untamed jungle for another land perhaps more akin to my real life, I look back and wonder if I got this right to begin with. Was I trying to do too much here? Am I guilty of the overindulgence in my imagination, or was I a victim of poor choices? I like to think a little bit of both. It's not uncommon to fabricate a perception of what you'd want somewhere to feel like, an all too common hope found in every traveler. The Borneo I lived was far removed from the one I hoped it would be. Perhaps I was better suited venturing up to an Iban longhouse in Sarawak than trying to jam in the best of Saba. I guess I'll never know. But that's the beauty of exploring deeper and further in this world. Not knowing if the next corner you reach was the one you'd been dreaming of all along. Thank you.